Do you think motherhood gives one some sense of imposter syndrome? Sorry, be intrusive. So I found that obviously because I have a platform and I want to make information on parenting more accessible, especially in terms of what they don't tell you in the antenatal classes because there were so many things that I learned on TikTok and from the internet that I didn't learn in those classes. And I think it's just more, you're able to digest information better if it's coming from a lived experience rather than like in a lecture form. So I do have the urge to like share my experience and talk about me going through it, but I also don't want it, to, I don't want it to come across as if I'm an expert because obviously I'm not, I'm a first, because I'm a first time mother. So like all I know is that I know nothing. I'm sure there's so much stuff that I don't know, but I also, think that I, not to discredit the information that I do give can be helpful for new parents. So, so there is a sense of imposter syndrome there because I'm like, because I'm an influencer or content creator, I feel like people want to know from me, even though I'm not like a parenting expert, I'm just like a normal person who's had a baby. But sometimes it is easier to learn from someone like that rather than, I don't know what I'm trying to talk about. But yeah, I do get kind of shy. I am in a group, I'm, a, I'm in a group chat with moms and I was used to like asking questions on my story, but now I don't need to because I'm in a group chat with other mothers. It's like a parent to parent support group. I'm too shy to say anything in it. Even if I do have questions, I'm like, I don't want to sound stupid, even though it's, a, it's like a safe space where everyone's asking every question. Um, under the sun and no one's ever judgmental in it because everyone has questions and no one's an expert uh, but for some reason I'm just like scared to ask anything in case I sound stupid but obviously it's better to ask questions than to keep it to yourself anyway with parenting you shouldn't keep it to yourself you have to kind of swallow your pride in that way has motherhood changed the insecurities of young womanhood like body image my body didn't actually change that much from pregnancy or post birth ribs are a bit wider and that's about it my ribs and my hips are a bit wider so my body is like wide out but I it didn't actually alter my body that much but I think it's because I'm at like the perfect age to have a baby I think that your body is built best to have a baby biologically in your mid early to mid 20s so you technically like not I hate this saying but like bounce back and there shouldn't be a pressure to bounce back at, at all either because you've just fucking given birth to a child and you're supposed to be looking after a baby not really worrying about what everyone else thinks of your body but like it's just one of those things that I don't think about but also I don't want to uh, ignore the fact that I'm in a privi privileged position where my body just naturally sprang sprang back to its normal shape but the only thing I'm kind of like getting used to is the size of my boobs so that's when I refer to like dressing for my postpartum body it's only in terms of my breastfeeding boobs it's like nothing nothing really else um but also just with matrix sense or matrix essence i don't know if it's matrix sense or matrix essence it's an ideology about how you, when you turn from maid into mother how you kind of lose your identity and re rebirth the rebirth of yourself afterwards and now i'm kind of trying to figure out who what type of person i am and also how I want the world to perceive me. It's kind of like I've gone through puberty again, which is kind of nice because it makes me look at the world in a new perspective. Have you experienced postpartum hair loss? Oh, bless you. Bless you. My hair loss has definitely peaked in the last week to the point where I'm like starting to notice a difference in my hairline. Now it was coming out in clumps and when I was in the shower, it was like, so like it was clogging the drain sort of so i had to keep like pulling hair clumps of hair out of the drain and cleaning out my hairbrush probably once a day with the amount of hair that was coming out but i think it is it's like a normal amount because your hair naturally sheds anyway all the time but when you're preg stop missy no but when you're pregnant that shedding stops so your the fire this your scalp clings to every hair follicle so then when you Oh no. So my hair loss is like definitely peaking. I can see it thinning a lot here. Like when I tie up my hair and when it does get a bit greasy, I can see how much hair I've lost. And also like it's it's receding the hairline. So that's mostly where it's going from. And I already have a big enough forehead. So it is, it's, it's probably not, it's knocking my confidence a little bit, but also like, like I said, I don't really have time to think about it. So it's not a huge deal. And I know it will grow back. I have been using the Mie, I don't know how to pronounce it, the, this like rosemary oil, this rosemary oil scalp treatment. I think straight rosemary oil is too potent to actually put on your scalp, so don't use that. I don't recommend you doing that to yourself, but um, I did see that product recommended on like a postpartum TikTok, so that's like, like I said, that's fucking where I get all of my information. Ah, 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 ah.
Why did you take out your piercings when you got pregnant? I don't actually know. I think it was because, now, you'll know now if anyone has a septum ring, you know the smell that the septum ring gives off. And when I was in my first trimester, I had really bad morning sickness for the first few weeks. And it was the smell of the septum ring was really making me feel sick. So I took that out and I took, I had already had my nose ring out, I think. And I took out my eyebrow piercing because it was rejecting anyway. But that's kind of the only piercing that I missed. Jason loved now, Jason loved my septum ring and he really wants me to get it back, but I'm scared to get it. I'm scared to get it pierced again because it was so sore. To be honest, I just don't think it's me. And it, like, I've kind of outgrown it, if you know what I mean. I don't like, I just don't feel like it's me anymore. And also when my, when we were viewing apartments, my dad would like <laughs> dress us and he made Jason take his septum ring out. I just kept them out and I don't, I don't have any, I don't really like feel like getting any of them back. But I do miss the eyebrow piercing. I think the eyebrow piercing was cool. But like the odd time, you know, depending on the day and what kind of mood you're in, I kind of miss the eyebrow piercing in that way, but not like all the time. Is motherhood and your relationship with your baby how you expect it to be? It's actually way better. When I was pregnant, I was so paranoid that she wasn't going to like me because like I was obsessed with her. And obviously you will go through stages as a parent of unrequited respect and love for each other because you are the parent. That's the dynamic. Like you love your child unconditionally, but I will inevitably piss her off. I'm going to embarrass her. Like I am gonna fuck up along the way it's just like how life is i will mess up but i'm also learning and the good thing is i'm the type of person who can't admit when i'm wrong move on from it and grow from it even if the, in the beginning i am stubborn like i do come around in the end oh my god i expect that for when she's a comprehensive coherent like back and forth talker child because obviously we're gonna have disagreements because we're two individual beings whereas in the first three years of a, of a baby's life you share they share the soul with the mother so i don't have to like worry about that until then basically but i also was just scared i wasn't going to be able to soothe her or i'm not gonna yeah i wouldn't be as nurturing you know i wouldn't be nurturing enough or i would look at her and not know what to do but a lot of it did just come naturally to me and i figured out how nurturing i actually am and just by like the sound of my voice soothes her proud of myself for the job that i'm doing and learning every like learning every day i thought that i would be so distressed at the, the sound of her cry and now i did have a few meltdowns i probably had two i think two in the first three yeah she's nearly four months in the first four months of her life i've only had two meltdowns and i think that's actually really good going because a lot of the times you end up crying with your baby and i'm really lucky she didn't have colic she didn't have any digestive issues. She's ha happy enough. Like she doesn't seem to have many, you know, like I'm lucky that I'm, breastfe I'm breastfeeding her as well. So she, there's no risk of her having a milk allergy. So we have had it like pretty well, fingers crossed, pretty good, fingers crossed because all of me, all me and my siblings all had colic and it's really hard. Well, it's obviously hard on the babies because they're screaming in pain and you can't help them, but it's really hard on the parents. It can have a real negative effect on your mental health. So I am lucky in that way. And I've only had two meltdowns when I've been on my own with her and she's been crying and I'm like crying along with her because I don't really know what to do. Or or that like I need to get something done quickly but she keeps crying like I need to go to the bathroom but she cries every time I put her down it's kind of like that kind of upset whereas now we have like a mutual understanding like if mommy needs to pee I have to go and I have to put you down so it's fine but she's getting a lot more independent by the day and she's able to like take naps on her own now so it is getting like much easier and I'm just really excited to see how her personality progresses because you can see it in her already apparently babies get their personalities in utero so it's nice to see little bits of her personality now do you sometimes miss life before baby and pregnancy prioritizing your own needs etc this was an interesting question because I was really like I was like I need to be really honest I'm not gonna lie about this because obviously parents would be scared to speak out about that because they'd be like, oh, you regret having children because you miss your old life. Like you shouldn't have had kids in the first place. Not the case at all. I don't actually miss prioritizing my own needs because I never did prioritize my own needs. And I only realize that now once I had her, how little I actually looked after myself or cared for myself. And I'm probably taking care of myself a little bit more now that she's around because I want to be a good influence for her. You know, show that it's possible to like look after yourself and a baby at the same time. Whereas beforehand I wasn't looking after myself pre-baby. Like I just was, I didn't give a fuck about myself, which is really upsetting. Now you'll see how much of my hair is coming out. I do miss having the freedom to, like maybe the freedom for me and Jason to just like go on a date when we want. It's just annoying getting the fucking buggy down the stairs is the only thing. And the carrier does hurt my back. That's the only, the complaint, that's the complaints department is not overrun with complaints at the moment. So I'm sure along the way there will be things that I miss. And I can't say I miss my friends because I see Emer every day and my two other best friends, Ashley and Reese, have emigrated. Like Reese lives in London and Ash lives in New Zealand. So 
I obviously miss them, but I would probably still be seeing them if they lived in Ireland. Actually, probably the only thing I miss is like a full night's sleep. A full night's sleep and a bed to myself. Even, no offense Jason, but I would love to spread out in the bed all, all on my own and like starfish in the bed. That's probably about it. How's the booby feeding going? So at the moment, I've really gotten the hang of it. Now she's like, because she's nearly for four months, it's getting so much easier because the feeds are spread out a lot more and um, she doesn't need as much feeding as she does when she's a newborn. I s talked about it in my story, she went through a phase of biting because she just started teething, but now she hasn't really, she hasn't really bit me since because I think it was like, I anytime she bit me, I'd go, ow, and then take her off and put her down and then try again a few minutes later. And apparently that actually like works. Like babies actually understand not to bite then after that. I didn't realize they could understand that much. But um, since then we haven't had any issues other than sometimes, and I think it's because she's teething. Oh, she goes, she like, she goes, Aah! and then we'll, scream kind of in my armpit and like turn her head but i think it's because she's either teething or needs to be burped so sometimes i'll just get her up burp her um see if she lets one rip if she does then i can try again but if she's still giving out then i take a break give her some tea that and then wait like half an hour to feed her again and then usually she'll have a really good latch then and um, be able to go for much longer i didn't realize this was going to happen but like i've stopped leaking as much from my boobs as well. Like I actually went to sleep with without a bra on for the first time since she's been born the other night because I fell asleep by accident without one on because I fell asleep as soon as I got out of the bath. I barely leaked at all because when you first get your milk in, like you are so engorged with milk. Like there's milk leaking everywhere. Like I had to change my breast pads twice a day um, and there'd be no chance that I'd be able to walk around without a breast pad because I would just be soaking. But now the milk only kind of comes in when she starts suckling. Like she starts suckling and then I'll feel like the pins and needles sort of feeling and then it will come. Um, rather than like randomly coming at any point of the day. And I didn't know that leaky boobs was a thing either when I was pregnant. I didn't, uh, even though my boobs were leaking when I was pregnant, but I thought I would just stay at sort of that pace because you do get your colostrum leakage if it's really warm out or whatever. So I thought it would only be that much, but I didn't realize the actual volume that you create, it, volume of leakage that you create. And I plan to go on until she's two. I think the World Health Organization came out with a study that children score higher on intelligence tests and it helps their immune system um, the longer you go on. And they recommend, they do originally recommend, I think the HSC and the NHS recommend six months of breastfeeding, maximum amount of skin to skin time, helping with their immunity and their brain development. But I think the World Health Organization now has bumped it up to two years. So I'll try, see if see how it goes on. But um, yeah, that's my goal now. Would you ever want a different job other than, you, other than YouTube and social media? Yeah, obviously I've tried out a load of things when I came out of school and I couldn't decide on anything and I ended up dropping out. So I'm not entirely sure what I am going for in this next stage of my life. But for the moment, I am really enjoying financial accounting. So I would hope to be a financial advisor at the end of it. But also I don't have any expectations of myself for like, the end goal of me doing something because sometimes I can turn me off or I get scared so then I end up giving up because I think I'm gonna be shit. So for the moment, I'm just focusing on doing that and studying it because I'm enjoying it for the moment. But I would like to do that in the future. Or maybe just going down to like one platform, maybe only doing podcasting or something. Cause I would one day love to delete all my social media and not be on anything at all whatsoever, just because online could be so cruel. I'm really a really sensitive person as much as I'd like to think that I don't care what other people think or that words don't affect me. I don't necessarily care what they think, but just like we're, mean words do affect me no matter what. And no matter how high my self esteem is or how good my life is going at, at that time, mean words do affect me, but they affect everyone. And it, like, I can't, be so I'm being hard on myself even by saying that and like I'm a person whose feelings get hurt so I don't think that I can actually handle it if I went on much longer especially when she gets older I want to protect her from that and not to expose her to all the nasty comments online so I'd hope for that reason to be off the internet fully by then now book recommendations let me get some books that I've read in the last while I read this when I was pregnant I cried once or twice. The Year of Magical Thinking. This has really good reviews and that's the reason I got it in the first place, but it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place and I didn't enjoy it as much as I would hoped. Now I am, I am gonna try another Joan Didion book just to test the waters. I wasn't really that much into it, so I'd probably give it like a three out of five. I think the writing in it is beautiful and I have a lot 
underlined. Uh, I read this also on my baby moon, Taddy is an Irish author. I think I talked about it before by Christine Dwyer Hickey. I loved this as well, a story of a young girl. I think it's in the 70s or the 80s. Yeah, it's a really good depiction of a troubled Dublin family. I love a book that's through the voice of a child because just the naivety and the innocence brings an element of like enjoyment for me because that's kind of like how I like to perceive the world, like through the eyes of a child because it it really lightens up the energy or something of a book. I love Eve Babbitts. I've never read it. This is my first book of hers that I've read and I really want to read some more. I really enjoyed the story. I love a troubled alcoholic writer as a protagonist of a story I, for some reason, I don't know. And the full, really nice short stories. I wanted all of them to be a full book on their own. I love Emma Klein. I read The Girls by her and I want to reread it again. I reread it probably last year. And I first read it, I think when I was 15 or 16, but I really want to read it again. I love her writing. If you have a short attention span, I feel like short stories are a really good option because you don't get bored of the storyline or anything. And there's no, there's no chance of it like going drab or whatever. Second place, this is also my first Rachel Cusk book, but I bought, I just bought In Transit by her as well. But I really like this book as well about like st troubling, troubled artists and fucking fucked up weird. But I loved her depictions of nature and just like her internal monologue was really similar to mine in the way that she's like anxious and worried that everyone hates her. Only tyrants want power for its own sake and parenthood is the closest most people get to an op opportunity of tyranny. Tyranny? Tyranny? I don't know. But I, I really liked that, yes. She has good takes on um, parenthood. Children don't care for their parents' truths and have long since made up their own minds or have formulated false beliefs from which they can never be persuaded since their whole conception of reality is founded on them. Just as you've recovered from your own childhood and finally crawled out of the pit of it, and felt the sun on your face for the first time, you have to give up that place in the sun to a baby you've determined won't suffer the way you did and crawl back down into another pit of self-sacrifice to make sure she doesn't. I thought that was really profound. I really, I really liked it. When people marry young, everything grows out of the shared root of their youth and it becomes impossible to tell which part is you and which the other person. So if you attempt to sever yourself from one another, it becomes a severance all the way from the roots to the furthest ends of the branches, a gory mess of a process that seems to leave you half of what you were before. I also read Milk Fed, but I lent that to my sister Ellie. And if you have like troubled relationships with your parents, if you like a good laugh during a book, there's also really raunchy scenes in it that I weren't that I wasn't um, expecting and it made me a bit uncomfortable but I, it was also really funny so I, I don't know I've, I've turned in kind of a prude I don't know it's like I think it's because I can't have sex myself so when I read of other people having sex I'm like oh just the thought of my vagina Ugh. another Irish author Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan if I hadn't seen a review of this I would have never picked this up in a bookshop because I do judge, judge a book by its cover this story has still stayed with me if you've had if you're so if you've ever been a subservient or a submissive woman in a relationship this is a, such a good read it can be it can tear at your heartstrings for it but this story has still stayed with me and it's exactly what it says in the tin acts of desperation okay this was a really cozy read i would recommend reading this during winter because it is a real uh, autumnal sort of winter read i read it i read it at the end of summer just before she was born i've heard people were giving it like people messaged me saying it was really boring but for some reason i I've just found it like comfy or something. And not necessarily that the, the storyline was really captivating, but just that I really liked the, not that I resonated with them at all. Actually, I didn't relate to any of the characters whatsoever, but I just really liked the characters. And also I just wanted to know how the story unfolded and the way she just describes things like, just mundane tasks around the house. I just found it really cozy. Romance shouldn't be to preserve young people, should it? I'm sure inside they feel the same emotions as an 18 year old. The yearning for approval and love doesn't change. The aging body is just cladding. A better love story, but for like old people. No, they're not that old. They're like in their 40s or something. So yeah, that's Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. I have a few books that are to read, like on my to read list. Should I show you them as well? Do you want to see my to read list? Probably. Yeah, if you need book ideas or so we can like talk about it together in the comments. I'll get them now. Obviously I've shared this on my story loads. It takes me years to finish a book now, but um, I'm only about halfway through this before the co coffee gets cold. I'm not into fantasy. I really, I'm not into fantasy whatsoever. I probably inherited that from my mother. She also hates fantasy novels, but I am kind of liking this. Yeah, like I'm not reading it going, oh, it's too, it's too much fantasy. I just, you know, I am gonna finish it because it's, it's a small enough book, but I just, I'm fi I think I'm just finishing it to finish it rather than that I'm really, really enjoying it. Anyway, but I do, I do like the book. This is a book now I'd pick up because of the cover. Sorry, I thought it was in transit, it's just transit. So another Rachel Cusk 
uh, book. I'm really excited to read this. I just love Rachel. I love Rachel Cusk, even though I've only read one of her things. But yeah, I saw this recommended on Pin I think I saw it on Pinterest. The New Me by Halle Butler. I got this ordered into Hodges Figures because I couldn't find it anywhere, but I got it now. And another on my to read list is what's it called? The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. I can't remember how what her name is. Yeah, that's on my to read list. But I might just get it for Ellie for Christmas, and then when she finishes it, she can lend it to me. And I'm also going to read The Secret History by Donna Tart. Ellie just finished that, and she gave it to me for a lend. So that's sitting inside so yeah okay has your love for your baby changed your perception of the world around you yeah i think this is what um largely why i'm getting the panic attacks or feel so anxious is because i just see especially because she's more mobile now she's she's starting to arch her back and about to roll over and i think that is the beginning of the end once she starts to crawl roll over on things like that's when the danger and the damage starts obviously in the first few months when you're holding them it's like completely 100% your fault if you drop them or whatever but now that she's like mobile she can put herself in so much danger so everywhere i just see danger everywhere i'm so scared of her falling off things i'm so scared of her starting to crawl i'm so scared of her like putting missy's litter or missy's food in her mouth obviously that won't happen because i am a, a, an attentive parent and i always have her next to me like i would feel anxious if she was in a room and i wasn't there i would have to keep checking on her every 30 seconds but i'm just hoping that when she starts to crawl she's not because cora was one of those babies where she like put everything in her mouth she wasn't like that at all but i feel like she is going to be like that where she puts everything in her mouth and i remember my little cousins when we brought them to the beach once they were putting sand in their mouth and i know that's a sign if for oh, grown women if you want to eat sand that you're deficient in iron but i don't know what it means for babies it's probably just like a natural instinct for babies to put stuff in their mouth yeah i am scared of her putting things in her mouth and crawling or like if we're when she's a toddler like running away from me or something or doing that you know the thing that toddlers do when they like eh! and they like when you're holding her hand and they like push it out because she is strong she's a fucking tank and when i'm breastfeeding her and she's like not into it and she starts kicking and punching me i'm like jesus christ and of course strength as well like i am scared for when she starts moving around because she could probably box the head off me but <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. how has it been keeping up friendships with a small child i think i already kind of answered this within another question i think it's been fine but i am really excited for my other friends to have babies just so like there's more common ground and we have things to talk about or on my end where like they can relate to the things i'm talking about because i've become totally unrelatable and kind of alien to my group of friends because the stuff that's going on in their life is completely different to mine but all my friends seem to be really like seem to actually genuinely really care about her and want to know how she's getting on and like actually want to know how i'm doing it's not like just like a formality that people have have felt the need to ask me or ask how she is because i've seen a lot of things online of mothers losing their friends in pregnancy and after they've had a child and it's really horrible and unfortunate and those people just weren't good friends to begin with and I hope that doesn't happen to anyone, but I'm lucky that it hasn't happened to me and I like my love my friends to the end of the earth. And I am open to new friends because I feel like I was so closed off the past, I think definitely since lockdown, I was just really, well, no, I actually, I met Emer like after lockdown. So that was one of the best friends that I came into my life from then. But like after I met Emer, I've been really closed off and making friends or making connections. But now I've kind of opened myself up and I feel like I'm inviting a lot more nice people into my life and I'm more willing to like, make new yeah. friends. I think I was scared of if I made new friends, I wouldn't be able to nourish, nurture the friendships that I already have when that's not true. Like your heart is, is so able for to love more than one person at one time. And especially because when, after Ashling moved to New Zealand, I, there's kind of been like a Ashling shaped hole in my heart for her not, for not having her around obviously we still talk online but it's obviously not the same because the time difference and everything i i do kind of like i think i'm gonna try make more friends maybe make some more man friends who knows has your sex life slash drive changed much postpartum since i put that video up you know the sex after birth video and i talked about me and jason having sex for the first time i we haven't tried to have penetrative sex since then i've been too scared i think traumatized from that experience i try not to think about it too much but it is so if you but just imagine like even if you aren't uh, if you even if you haven't given birth but just try to imagine your vagina being cut open and then sewn back together and not being sewn back together properly oh <sighs> i'm avoiding well number one i don't want to go back to the rotunda because i'm traumatized from that whole experience i don't want to go back to the rotunda well i loved my midwives it was just the aftermath of like my my stitches getting infected and people poking and prodding at you and having to have fingers up there to make sure that the shape was okay and oh it was just it was really not nice the whole after like the postpartum experience but obviously the giving if you're giving birth in the rotunda like the, I, everyone is so nice and it was such a nice experience it's just afterwards i uh, have been avoiding and putting off making a gynecologist appointment because like my vagina it's not i know it's not right i know in my my i know myself intuitive like instinctively um 
the, whatever's going on down there is not hasn't been put back together properly so yeah so until then i'm just not gonna have penetrative sex because i'm too scared to put anything up there have a great day i love you all Mwah.